Hi, I'm Katherine Dyer, and you are listening to the Ramblings of a Hellblazer with Chris Gordon. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, listeners, wherever you are in the world right now. This is Ramblings of a Hellblazer with yours truly, Chris Gordon. Today I have an exclusive for you. This lady is an esteemed actor and also co-runs Drama Inc. School of Acting, along with her husband, Jason MacDonald. She's most well known currently as the badass Connie Frazier on Stranger Things. So today I bring to you Catherine Dyer. Everyone, I am here today with Catherine Dyer of Stranger Things. Good, e- good morning, Catherine. How are you? I am great. It's now. It's just now afternoon over here. So good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. It's good evening for me. <laughs> so how? Yeah, you're doing well. Thank you. For, first of all, I've got to say thank you so much for agreeing to come on. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I'm so glad you reached out. Oh no, it's brilliant. Um, yes, obviously, having seen you in Stranger Things and seen your amazing character. Very uh, dominant. <laughs> Wasn't she sweet? Yeah, very. <laughs> Just that opening, <laughs> you know, that first opening scene when you come in uh, and, uh, yeah, shoot, Chris Sullivan. <laughs> you know, it was um, when I went on set, to, that was the first scene that we shot, and I went on set um, and I had. I had had uh, some some gun training uh, here in Atlanta mm-hmm. at Norcross Gun Training, uh, Nor- Norcross Gun Shop, and then when I got on set, they had more training for me. And the the ammo experts were walking around looking for me. They're saying, "Who's who's the woman playing Connie Frazier?" Mm-hmm. And here I am with the hair and this. And I said, "I am." They went, "What? You? You're playing Connie <laughs> Frazier?" I said, "Yep." So it was fun to be uh, have the the sort of faux niceness and then pull out my gun yeah that was it was just like a, it was a moment of shock it was like <gasps> I think my, my my wife she saw it coming she was like oh, I knew that was going to happen <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you must have just had this look about you <laughs> uh, I guess I did <laughs> but no it was it was a yeah, sweet little old that was not a sweet little woman from the uh, child agency and then all of a sudden <laughs> yes and I don't get to do roles like that yeah, that pr- must be pretty intense to do something. That fun. Cool. Yeah, we'll get on to that. <laughs> so first, yeah. first of all, is what made you want a career in acting in the first place? How did you get into it? Well, there's no math. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> really, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and I got into it a little later than most after high school. Um, and I moved to New York to go to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, mm-hmm. and I felt confident. In, in what I was doing and um, loved the craft. I loved the school. And I stayed in New York for many, many, many years, 25 plus years, doing theater yeah. and some commercial print work and some commercials. And I moved to L.A. for a while doing the same thing and then back to New York. And then uh, a few years ago back uh, down here to Atlanta. Cool. Sounds pretty yeah, good. Yeah, there, there was nothing else I really wanted to do. If I had gone in a different field probably would have been uh psychology which 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 melds with acting because of course you know we have to understand our characters and know why they tick very very true uh i mean i can guess a question i've got later on as well is obviously part of what you do besides your acting with the teaching and stuff as well the psychology would work very well in there sure um, but again we'll get to that later (laughs) otherwise i'm gonna have a lot of editing to do (laughs) yes okay 
that's my fault. Okay, so you've also been in great stage shows as well with the theatre side of the acting. Uh, 39 Steps, Manchurian Candidate. Do you prefer the theatre or screen? Well, uh, the theatre is my first love, as many, many actors say. Um, and I was trained in theatre. And um, the, the two shows that you mentioned are, are two of my favourites. Um, mm-hmm. Manchurian Candidate, I had big shoes to fill. Angela Lansbury reprising that role. I mean, she was sublime in that film. Yep. Um, and I was very honored to be doing that on stage. I loved it. And the 39 Steps I did uh, just a few years ago with my husband playing yeah. um, Henny. Cool. Uh, his name is Jason MacDonald. And two other Atlanta-based actors who are remarkable in their talent. They're absolutely remarkable. Um, if I never do another play... Yeah. I will be happy because the 39 Steps was such an amazing experience. It was so much fun. Uh, it was great working with my husband. Um, but I... Do I prefer... Well, I'm making a little more money with TV film. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Um, and it's and I moved down to Atlanta just at the right time. So I'm just going to stay on this stay on this TV film wheel. <laughs> Excellent. As long as I can. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff, and a lot of good stuff is coming out of Atlanta as well in the TV. Um, it started out, I mean, it's quite ironic, it's 12 months to the day since I started this podcast interviewing, and the first guys I interviewed were the guys who played NBC's Constantine, and that was all filmed really? in Atlanta as well. That's right, that's right. Wow, congratulations. So, uh, thank you, so I've come full circle in 12 months, I've gone from Atlanta and I've come back to it, talking to you in Indeed. Atlanta. Indeed, congratulations, <laughs> that's great, that's terrific. Cool. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it seems to be uh, a hive of filming activity down there. It's um, this industry has brought. I think I just read recently seven billion dollars to the state of Georgia. My goodness. Seven billion dollars. Yeah, that's. And it affects everything. It affects all businesses. Well, yeah, exactly. It's a positive boost for everyone, isn't it? Because it's so yeah. much. It brings tourism and. Everything. I mean, you've got the Walking Dead's down there too, isn't it? Yes, and the whole town where the Walking Dead is filmed. Uh, they have their own tourism in the town. Mm. They have they have bus tours showing where where the show is shot. And I think a friend of mine's been on there. He's gone over and he's he's seen it. So it must be. <laughs> <laughs> it's on my to do list someday. <laughs> well, hurry because apparently it's not being. They're not doing another season of it. Oh no! <laughs> I'll have to hurry then. I'll have to uh, yeah. I'll have to Come make, on some, over. make hurry some up. money Come and over. get over there. <laughs> do yeah. Excellent. Um, and again, you've appeared on many shows over the years. So, what's your, what would be your favourite show that you've been on? I guess I think, it... I think I have to say Stranger Things. Yeah. You know, for for several reasons, because it's a fantastic character that I don't normally get to to play. Mm-hmm. Um, usually, I play the upscale, wealthy um, sort of, you know, the the, the wife, you know, yeah. um, or lawyers, doctors. But to be able to pull out a gun and shoot somebody in the head, you know, <laughs> that was fun. Oh, and, yeah. you know, my agent wouldn't look at me necessarily and say, yeah, Catherine Dyer's for that role. So I have to thank the casting, the Atlanta-based casting, um, Feldstein Paris casting, who really pushed me mm-hmm. in for this role. They, they knew I could do this, and they were so supportive of me. And uh, thankfully, thankfully. <laughs> Well, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, because it was definitely a role that everyone is talking about. Uh, <laughs> or you've got and, to, it's great. And also, everything I shot ended up on the screen. Oh, really? That's... Because so often, I something I shoot and I'll go to see it, whether it's a TV show or a film, and, you know, I've been cut. My scenes yeah. have been cut dramatically. The movie Cell, have you seen that? With I have, Keith yeah, Cell? yeah. You have? I I'm in the bar. To, yeah, I spoke to Eric. Oh, yeah. I'm the woman in the bar. Oh, God. I didn't recognize you from that. <laughs> <laughs> the drunk wow. woman in the bar. Oh, wow. Um, and that was a whole... I had a whole scene with John Cusack, which was cut. Wow, that's a... So... Really, yeah. I can yeah, I'm the I'm woman that went to the door and... Yeah. Over the... Yeah. yeah I, I, I recognize you now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Not my prettiest role, I must say. <laughs> There's my research for you. No, um, I see. Don't, don't even worry no. about it. See, I spoke to Erin, Erin Burns, who was in Cell as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I watched that movie. I enjoyed it. That was a good one as well. And yeah, it, it, was, that, it was kind of gory. It was very gory, and I think it had a very scary twist, like I said to Erin, in fact, it kind of replicates modern society that everyone's turned into these fombies. I think they're called phone zombies, and yeah, I admit it, I'm one, uh, you know. <laughs> 
I mean, how can we not be? You know, you can go to a, a restaurant or a coffee shop and see four people sitting around a table with each other all, you know, all on their phones. Yeah, conversations died. I know over here there's a, a few little games where people, if they go to the restaurant, they put the phones in the table in the middle. Yes. <laughs> whoever gets, whoever touches it first pays for everybody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's real. That's good. Yeah, that'll, that'll keep you from touching that phone. Oh, yeah. There's also a bar down in Brighton in south in southern England. And it was in the news that they're, they're in, well, they're in trouble because some people are, acute, uh, are trying to sue them. But it's a grey area because they've created, oh, what's the cage? There's this, I've completely blanked on what it's called, but there's, um, I, I know it from the Warehouse 13 TV show. <laughs> it's a cage where you can print, they put tin foil around the room, inside the walls, and copper. And it's, it blocks the signal for mobile phones in the whole bar. So anyone who goes in, no matter what network you're on, because he doesn't—he wants people to talk to each other rather than talk on the phone oh my gosh. or text on their phone. So he's actually created this cage. It's and uh, I'll have to remember the name of it sometime. But <laughs> it's um, it just blocks the signal for all mobile phones. Wow! So if you want to go on the phone, you have to go out the bar. Like smoking a cigarette. Yeah, basically. Over here, I don't know if it's over. Yeah, it's the now. same here as well. You have yeah, to go yeah. outside. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. It's not actually. It's quite a good one. Quite a few people actually like it because it means people mm-hmm. talk again. Yeah, because the art of conversation is dying in this society, I think. <laughs> Which is what That's sales that. all about. <laughs> Absolutely right. So, I mean, you, you started to sort of talk about how you landed that role in Stranger Things. Well, speaking of year anniversary, it's it's been a year almost exactly, I guess it was July was a year, that I first got the email from my agent to audition and it was a it was quite a process it was you know we self tape auditions yeah over here at least in this market we do that they're not doing it as much in LA um so i sent in my audition and i almost didn't read for it because the the role was for a redhead it called for a redhead right so i almost didn't read for it well okay i'll i'll do it um and then it was a series of i went in for a callback and met LA casting did the scene once. She said, okay, fine, thank you. Mm-hmm. Great, then, you know, whatever, move on to the next one. Yeah. And then I had to do a pitch bio, and then I had to send in my reel a couple of times. And then it was all these steps, and then they put me on hold for six months, uh, which is not standard. Right. Um, and finally, I booked it, which was great, and I think it was only a couple of episodes at first. But then the brothers apparently liked what I was doing, which I found out only on the day that we wrapped that they kept writing me into it oh wow that's pretty cool that's got to be a nice ego boost in there it was confidence it was, boost, a, I'll say. it was validation yeah that your hard efforts validation. are actually you know you... and i had no idea i mean the whole time i'm shooting you know from october to february you know a week here a few days there um i had no clue what they were thinking right you know, I, they were working, you know, they were together working. And so I'm just, I'm, I, if they're not saying anything to me, I'm doing my job, you know, I'm on the right track. I'm just mm-hmm. going to keep going. Um, and then, you know, we would chat a little bit. And then at the very end, they just were, I mean, they were so complimentary. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> this is very kind. No, that that is good. Like you say, the val- that's the right word is validation, and that's it. Must be nice to get that in in the field that you're in. It is. I mean, it's nice in, in any field, but we don't we don't always get it as as actors, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, and I guess post filming, and now that the show's on air, you're getting that validation again. Because, like I said before, the guy's character is just. It's just gone phenomenal. Not, not just the character, obviously, the show, but your character yeah. as well. People just can't get over that <laughs> that kick-ass, <laughs> that kick-ass I've attitude. heard the term badass so many times yeah. <laughs> in referring to me. So many times. Well, it's very, very true. I, um... <laughs> in fact, um, Millie, who plays Eleven, you know, she's English. Is she? I didn't yeah, know she was yeah. English. She said to me in the makeup trailer, she said, oh, you're a badass. Oh, you really are. <laughs> Oh, that's cute. <laughs> it was cute. <laughs> I didn't know she was English, actually. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't she amazing? She was. She was brilliant. I mean, all the kids were, you know, all the ones. Because you've got to say, you know, I mean, I tell, I'm tell. i going to ask you about the thing, but obviously this, 
being the show something special in a minute, but for me, and I think for a lot of people, with the kids brought in, the way it was filmed, the, the cinematography, you'd think... I know that's, I'm not trying to insult the brothers, but you'd think that Spielberg would be involved because it really draws on everything. I mean, I'm 40, so, for, you know, that generation, it was, it was E.T., The Goonies, every, oh, it was just absolute yeah. amazing show just to see everything coming in again and all these little childhood dreams and the, and the reality and just bringing it into the modern day. It, it, that's what, I think that's why it works so well. And it really Absolutely. It, and uh, a little bit of The X-Files in there. Yes, definitely. Somebody called me Scully-esque, which <laughs> yeah. I thought was a great, great compliment. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it it was an homage to everything that you mentioned, absolutely. And yeah, those those, those brothers, the Duffer brothers, are, we're going to see a lot more from them, I'm sure. Oh, I mean, yeah, I you know they've proved their point with what with Stranger Things, and i um, hopefully we'll see more of Stranger Things too, because I'm sure that'll come back. <laughs> I, it will come back. It will find I don't know about yeah. this here. I didn't look very good there at the end. No. <laughs> <laughs> but but you never know. Things stranger things have happened. Indeed, and we never know what can happen in the upside down, right? Exactly. Things so, can totally change around. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. See, I love that concept of the upside down as well. You know, I think there was that scene. It was the the pool. Um, yeah. And she was just sat on the pool, and then yeah. you know, you, they walked outside, and she was in the upside down. So it was all right. grimy. It looked like you know all the aliens, and and then they walked out, and it was perfectly fine. Not a thing wrong with it. And it was just like the mix of the two worlds, sublime, brilliant. It, it really was. It was. It was brilliant. And the how did they see that? You know. Mm. And he said the brothers said that they had thirty pages of the upside down. And what exactly it was. Yeah. You know, it was like it scripts for two different worlds. Wow. It was amazing. That is that's really, you know, that's, it is fantastic. So, I mean, kind of thinking about that, how, what do you think about the newer networks like Netflix producing shows like this? Because I think in a lot of the mainstream networks now, the way they're going with a lot of reality TV, which I can't stand. Uh, apologies to anyone who does reality TV, but you know, it's, it's a way, but... For me, we've got talented guys like yourselves who do this for a living and, you know, they put reality TV on. It's like, why? We need to see some imagination. We need to, that's what we want, imagination. Um, so, again, apologies. I'm not knocking. Well, I am. <laughs> my, that's my view. And, I'm, you know, my view only. Um, but with Netflix coming along, it gives an Amazon and Prime, all these people, they're, they're bringing so much more to be um, produced, I believe, so is that kind of your feeling as well, that there seems to be a whole new genre of... Absolutely. It's, A, it's more work for actors. And mm-hmm. as an actor, the only thing an actor wants is, is, is more work. Yeah. Um, you know, how many secretaries sit at a desk and say, bring me more folders so I can file them. Just bring them. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Yeah. Actors want to work. So with the advent of these networks... Um, producing, you know, original content. It's fantastic. But it also gives the viewer control. We're not we're not stymied by what the three major networks, you know, by their schedules. Yeah. You know, we can watch as much or as little as we want whenever we mm. want. So I think it's fantastic. Oh it is. It's like with like with Stranger Things for example. I mean I've got you got you on now. Um and I guess in a normal schedule being in the UK I might not have even got to episode one yet because we're always behind. <laughs> but now I've been able to binge right. watch the entire seat. You can, you know, I think it was three days. That's all it took. <laughs> uh, uh, me too. I did the How, same thing. Friday, Friday, Saturday, it, Sunday, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those shows you just can't stop watching because you've got to yeah. watch the next one. And it's like, right, it's time to bed. No, it's not. I've got to watch another episode. <laughs> and, and two at once. I couldn't watch just once. I watched two. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Two and three a night, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's fantastic. Uh, let's keep them, you know, long may they live and produce original content. And I love that a lot of them are coming here to Atlanta. Yeah, they are. That's what I was going to say. Most yeah. of, as you just said there, the amount of money and revenue that Atlanta has been pumped, had pumped into it um, is phenomenal. Um, you can see that kind of in the UK as well, because over here, obviously, traditionally, it's all been in London and the studios around London. 
But now they're, they're branching out into Cardiff in South Wales. Well, Doctor Who's, for example, they're all in Cardiff in South Wales. Right. Um, in Manchester. And, all, you know, they're actually spreading around as well, the filming locations. Game of Thrones is filmed over in Ireland. Right. Although I'm gutted. It should be filmed in North Wales where I live because we've got just as much nice scenery. <laughs> <laughs> And I could go in and stand by set and go, hi. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's, you know, it's just spreading it around. And I think the introduction of like Netflix, Amazon, all these networks and the other, they do bring that opportunity for companies just to go wherever they want. They don't have to base themselves in Hollywood or London. And, and it's just a fantastic opportunity. Yeah. As you say, long may they continue. Yes, Absolutely. So my next question is, we've touched on this quite a lot already, because and your enthusiasm for it has been overwhelming, is how was it like working on the show? <laughs> it was, um, it was, you know, it, it was terrific. You know, these jobs aren't, um, working, doing what I do is fraught with a lot of tension mm-hmm. and stress, and you want to do a good job, and you want to be, do everything right, and you want to make, you know, the directors happy, and, yeah. um, but what was wonderful was that I was there long enough that I got to know the other actors mm-hmm. that I got. It wasn't just a, a day or two um, that I got to know the crew that I was, you know, I was, Oh, the heck morning, Catherine, you know, yeah. um, it wasn't just a day player. Matthew Modine was terrific. Mm-hmm. He was a sweetheart. Yeah. Um, it, it was just, and he's the one who I worked with mostly. I was going to say, yeah, he was probably the one who come, got that relationship with working. Yes, yeah. I see. I think we need to both come back together, actually. Um, <laughs> and yeah, like I said, the the brothers were um, they were working. You know, they were they were constantly. You could see them. You know, the two of them thinking, talking, and um, and they were easy. They were yeah. very easy to work with. And yeah, like I said at, at the final wrap, they were quite complimentary. So it made it all worthwhile. No, that's really good. I guess it really helps when there's. You've got people who are easy to work with like that and in jail. And, uh, with the fact that the, the show was such an interesting concept and mix, I think all the other actors and all your other talent probably all felt the same as well. So It was, it a, it was, a very, it was an easy set. It was a very comfortable set. And everyone seemed to get along. Excellent. I mean, they yeah. always say never work with animals or children either, and you had lots of children to work with. But they were I, great. I, they, I only saw them, I saw them a couple of times in the makeup trailer, mm-hmm. but I only worked with them the last episode. I was going to say, yeah. Cause it was and it was only her, really. It was only uh, the other kids I didn't really have to deal with. Very, very true. That's true, actually. Yeah, it was really so, only 11. <laughs> so I didn't have to work with kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you got away with that one. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Cool. So I've got a question from Lisa Tripp here as well. Um, All right. She would like to know, did you grow up shooting guns? Because it sure looked like you did. <laughs> no, I did not. I'm not, I'm not crazy about guns, personally. Mm-hmm. Um, but sentiment, we I, agree. <laughs> what's that? I said a sentiment we both uh, have. <laughs> yeah, despite the fact that I am an American, I'm not crazy about guns. <laughs> um, I, I first took a, a lesson at, uh, as I said earlier, Norcross Gun Club. My niece, uh, Meg Hinton, and her husband are managers, and mm-hmm. he, he is an, he's an expert. They're both experts, but he, he teaches, and I was with him for two hours, and it was fascinating. Yeah. Um, and then when I got on set, there were the uh, experts. So I had another hour or so with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was... Um, it, it was pretty harrowing having this gun that was huge, you know, with the silencer on it, yeah. and aiming it at a man's head. <laughs> it was pretty daunting. You know, of course, you know, so many camera angles, and I actually shot at an X on the wall. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, and also the gun, here's a, here's a secret. Mm-hmm. Don't tell anybody this. <laughs> no, nope. okay? it's our secret. So if you notice in that first scene, I walk in and I'm starting to go into my purse. Yeah. Well, then it cuts and the gun was so big and my hands are small that I couldn't pull the hammer back. Right. So they cut and one of the experts was below me, handed handed the gun up to me, mm-hmm. already cocked so I could just pull it up and shoot it. <laughs> Shh. Okay. That's, yeah, just that's, a- our, that's our secret. No one, no one's not, no one's going to hear that. Okay. 
<laughs> oh no, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. And I say, I mean, the reason she asked that question is obviously because the training that you'd received, you came out and you handled that very well. I but... hope so. I, I mean, <laughs> I, my niece watched and she, at first she said, I, I wasn't sure that if you did the right, you know, did it correctly. Sorry, my phone. Um, then she said, then I slowed it down and watched it in slow motion. She said, you did everything exactly as we taught you. And I said, I mean, that was the biggest part. I wanted to do my niece proud. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> Excellent. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, that picture that someone's obviously taken a still from there and that's all over the internet of stranger things. It's you stood there like that. <laughs> that must be I'm, pretty daunting. I'm a to meme. See. There are a few memes. There are. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen a few of them. <laughs> Some really cracking ones out there as well. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So Laura Marie Howard, uh, she's an actress friend of mine. Um, she's just done a film called Pandorica, actually, which was her first big film. It was an independent one in the UK. She'd love to like to know what kind of advice you'd give to an as- inspired or aspiring actor. Get out. Leave. No, I'm, <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I would say study, study, study. Mm-hmm. Get into a class. Uh, find a technique or several techniques that work for you. You know, a lot of actors I know study several techniques, but take a little bit from each. Yeah. Um, do whatever works for you, but always be in a class. If you're, if you're going to pursue on-camera work, get into an on-camera class. Learn how to audition. You know, there, there's a skill to it. And when you get in front of a casting director, and if you haven't had any on-camera experience, at least classroom experience, there are just a few little things that they'll see that will go, you know what, I like her, but she needs another six months. So we'll right. see her again in six months. Don't rush it. Don't rush anything. Get in front of an agent or casting director when you are fully confident in, in your craft. And keep, keep doing it. You know, it's a, it's a tough industry, um, one that we don't have a lot of control over, but we do have control over our craft and what we do, our auditions. Yeah. Do it. You know, you audition for your career, not for the job. Mm-hmm. So you're auditioning, you're building relationships with casting directors, you're auditioning for your whole career. If you get the job, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, that's wonderful. Of course we want it. But audition, leave the room feeling like you did a kick-ass job and go on to the next one. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's hard to, sometimes it's hard to let go. And, you know, you leave an audition going, I know I did a great job. And that's what you want. That's really what you want. You did your job. Excellent. Brilliant advice. I'll take that on board as well because it's something I'm looking to try and get into. I started when I, I did. I started when I was a ch- in school and then I stopped because my parents want I, I, I love them to bits, but they wanted me to do something, a sensible career. <laughs> well, they were right. I mean, it's great to have something to fall back on. And, and for young people who are interested in the, in the industry and are just going to college, I'll say, get, you know, maybe get a business degree because business is so much, it's a huge part of it. Mm-hmm. Huge this industry do something worthwhile something you can fall back on and then minor in theater or film but yeah it's it's not easy <laughs> no <laughs> but it, but it's rewarding Def- when it's rewarding yeah. it's rewarding yeah i can see that from speaking to obviously the, the the people i speak to and the passion and how you know like you've just said the, the validation that you got from being told you know your role in there was great and stuff like that so i'm kind of looking forward i'm actually in robin hood new beginnings next year it's a new TV show in the UK that's been filmed with a female Robin Hood. It's a twist on the tale. There's some. It's got a you know, Game of Thronesy type style. I'm the jailer, um, so I've, I've actually got a speaking role as well, for which I'm really happy about. It's a couple awesome. Of, so I get to do that. So I'm, I can't wait to be honest. It's going to be fantastic, and I'm hoping that's going to be the start of a lot to come. So obviously, I'll be taking a lot of practice in. I'm going to look at the Meisner technique as well because you, know, you mentioned the techniques. In I'll get myself to a class. Meisner is good. Also look into the Ivana Chubbuck technique, C-H-U-B-B-U-C-K. Oh, okay. Those, she's an acting teacher in L.A., and um, those are the two that we offer at Drama Inc. Yeah. Uh, they're both vastly different, mm-hmm. but um, you can get something from each of them. Yeah, and then bring it all together. Yeah. Yeah, just use whatever works for you. Fantastic. I'll look that up. Uh, and speaking of Drama Inc., Obviously, I've spoke, yeah. <laughs> I've spoke to Dustin and Erin, both of whom. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, so you're now flashing because it's not video. You're now flashing your little flask with drama ink. <laughs> and, yeah, 
Yeah, exactly, exactly, perfect. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I spoke to Dustin about it, and he's he raves about everything, and you know, he really does. He he couldn't say anything more positive about the whole experience and the whole what you do. Um, so can you talk to me about that? Tell us more about it. We've touched on it slightly with the diff- you know the techniques and guidance. So what do you do? What do you do there? How do you? Well, we um, uh, uh, my husband had this idea five or six years ago to open an acting studio and I thought he was nuts. Um, but then things changed in our lives and mm-hmm. it, it was time and we had this idea and we fleshed it out with uh, two of our friends who were also a married actor acting couple. Yeah. And we opened three years ago, three years ago in June and we teach, we offer improv, we have the techniques, we have commercial classes, but we aren't a kind of studio that, promises to make you a star. Mm-hmm. You'll never hear us say, yeah, you're going to you're gonna be famous. We're about the work. We're yeah. not, you know, the bills are getting paid. Mm-hmm. We're making, uh, you know, we're bringing home some money for ourselves, but we're not rolling in the dough. We're not taking advantage of people. Um, and there are, are a lot of people out there who will. Yeah. You know, in fact, there's a, there's a person who works here as an extra and they have, they're teaching. And they've just, you know, this is, you just have to vet your teachers. Um, we love what we do. Yeah. We love what we do. We brought Dustin on. Uh, he's our office coordinator mm-hmm. and he's been just fantastic. Erin is our Meisner teacher and she's been amazing and she is so proactive and so passionate about what she does. Oh, her yeah. Students, I got that. Her straight students adore her. <laughs> we're, we're lucky. We're lucky to have them both. Um, and that, you know, I can finally say that I'm making my living as an actor. If I'm not working, then I'm at Drama Inc. and I'm still an actor. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm teaching and I teach what I learn. Whenever I'm on a set, I learn something. Mm-hmm. Every single time I'm on a set, I learn something. I bring that into the classroom. So it's all my experience I pass on. Don't make mistakes I made. Or here, let yeah. me give you a little in on this or that. Mm-hmm. We're, it's, uh, it's pretty mind-blowing, you know, what we've done and the, the, the friendships that have evolved from within the students. Within our, yeah. It's just really so, so sweet. People are very kind, and we're thrilled. Fantastic. It sounds great. And I say, um, speaking to you now who, who owns it is great, because I say I spoke to Dustin, I spoke to Erin, and the passion that those guys have, and especially when we start talking about, obviously, Drama Inc. and what they do there as well. And you can just see, I mean, Erin's eyes just... Bling, they light up. I mean, they were, they were all the time. She was, you know, so, so passionate um, with everything yeah. that she did. And, you know, we chatted afterwards and we were just crying with laughter. It was just, it was just fantastic. The, um, the vibes that, you know, she passed through were just brilliant. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of that is to do with, with the fact that you're, you're sharing your passion for acting with other people who are learning. And that is something which is, like you say, there's a lot of people out there who could probably misuse that and you don't want to make you don't you don't want to lie to people and say we want to make you a star uh, yeah. so I think if I remember speaking to someone I think there's like 95 or 90 even more than that 95 96% of actors are not you know there's only a little tiny 1% that's these, right like you know Samuel Jackson's and you that's right that's and make right. it big like that so <laughs> more actors are out of work than than working yeah which is a sad fact which is why we need more places like Netflix to do original exactly. series Less reality, uh, my opinion only. <laughs> oh no, you're right. You're right. I mean, yeah, there's no there's no craft or art in in reality TV, in my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's true. I mean, you watch it, and it's just like, it, especially when it's so repetitive every year. It's like seriously, all the money that could have been spent there. You know, I've got a lot of acting yeah. friends as well, and I, I'm like, you guys should be up there <laughs> doing yeah. stuff doing stuff decent and there's a lot of cri- not just the actors as well I mean I've got lo- a writer friends who are screenwriters as well and the ideas that are just buzzing out there at the moment which is just they just get floated around and it's ah, oh, it's the talent that is available is right is great and I, you know so yeah Netflix Amazon everybody just hope carry on and just pick up all these ideas and bring right, you guys okay. into the work it'd be awesome are you watching Bloodline Am I watching that? Sorry, Bloodline. I'm not. Um, no, Netflix? no, not yet. <laughs> Look into that one. It's it's. There's lovely work, and I think one. I think one of the lead guys is a uh, is a Brit, actually. All right. Okay. I think so. Yeah. It's, I'll look. it's really good. I'll look it up. <laughs> and it takes place. It's shot in Key West, Florida, so it's stunning. 
Oh, right, okay, excellent. I shall have a look. Um, when I get Netflix back, because usually that's taken up with my son watching Spongebob <laughs> <laughs> and DreamWorks Dragons and stuff like that. <laughs> I go onto mine because we've got a shared out for your child. Obviously, you know, you can spill it between your child and profile. So I go onto my profile and find that he's done it all on mine. So all my, oh. recom- all my recommendations are Horrid Henry. and <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have to take so much to scroll to actually get to something I want to watch. <laughs> that's really cute. But it's just, again, it's a sign of how decent these networks are, that you can just pick and choose what you want to watch and, yeah. and at your own will. It's great. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We have control. We're giving, we giving us control. Exactly. Do you have anything else in the pipeline at the moment going on or coming out? Well, I'm, I'm sort of superstitious. I don't talk about things. I have things in, you know, a lot of irons in the fire, yeah. as many actors do. Um, What's coming out? Uh, the Founder's coming out, which is the film about um, Ray Kroc, who, mm-hmm. who, McDonald's. Right. He, yeah. It's a small role. Um, and Levy is coming out, again, um, a smaller role, but that was wonderful to work with. Um, what else do I have? What else do I have? But, yeah, I'm waiting to hear about some things, so I don't... Yeah. Yeah, we'll keep zips on those, don't worry. <laughs> I understand. I appreciate that. That's cool. Um, I've actually... Run out of questions for you now, which is a shame. That's <laughs> come to fine. Come. <laughs> been chatting for quite a while. It's been great. Um, if anything you'd like to say to the people out there, to the fans of you, to the fans of Stranger Things. Thank you. Thank you. Let's keep it rolling. Yeah, keep those keep those cards and letters coming. <laughs> I'm just thrilled. I'm just so I'm just so excited about Stranger Things and and this everything surrounding it. I'm honored uh, and lucky to be associated with it. Excellent. Thank you. I do believe it's going to be, you're right, I think that show is it's picking, it's picking up so much momentum and it's, yeah, you can see it's going to turn into the, you know, that kind of X-Files classic. Ah, that's what I see. That, and wouldn't that be amazing? You know? <laughs> but you can see that's the kind of momentum it's building up and yeah. building up as people get to know more about it. Yeah, and I'm curious about season two. I mean, I wonder, should they just leave it at this one season and be done with it and, and do something else because it's perfect? Um, you know, I wonder what they're going to do in season two. Yeah, yeah, it will be interesting to see. Thank you, Catherine. That was absolutely fantastic. I appreciate your time to talk to me today. And for all of you, I hope you all enjoyed listening to that and taking on Catherine's advice, which was absolutely sound for aspiring young actors. So thanks once again, Catherine. Uh, very, very good. And for those of you who have not caught the show yet, Stranger Things is on Netflix. You can catch the whole of season one. I highly recommend it. So this has been Ramblings of a Hellblazer and Chris Gordon saying goodbye. <laughs>